Welcome to Eye on Northwest Wines. I'm Natalie Marmion. The Northwest wine industry has a lot to offer, so let's get right to it. Our first stop is going to take you to Southern Oregon to learn more about the wine, food, and fun you can find right in the heart of the Rogue Valley. The Rogue Valley is Oregon's best kept secret, and it really is this undiscovered and untouched region. With Crater Lake National Park as our anchor to the north, and then Ashland Shakespeare Festival with our anchor to the south. In between, we're dotted with over 100 wineries with 53 tasting rooms. So there really is just a spectrum of opportunity for visitors here. And it all started back with Harry and David and Peter Britt. Harry and David really paved the path here for agriculture in the Rogue Valley in the early 1900s when they started to produce commies pears outside of France. They were the first to do so. And just in that same time frame, we had Peter Britt who planted the first vineyards in the state of Oregon, right here in the Rogue Valley. Now we are a world-class, world-renowned wine and agricultural region. Crater Lake National Park is Oregon's only national park, right in our backyard. 50 miles to the north of Medford, and the river that everyone comes here for is the Rogue River that we get to raft um, all season long, and that starts just to the east of the National Park. Oregon has two plateaus in the state, and Table Rocks are right here in the center of the Rogue Valley. They're left over from the volcanic remnants, which really play a huge role in our agriculture and in our wine industry, where we have a lot of microclimates and volcanic soils coupled with a diurnal temperature swing that's one of the largest in the world. And they really reflect the volcanic influence that we have here in our soils that really helps shape the quality of wine that we produce. We have such a playground to play with here. And to add the wineries on top of that, we really have just this beautiful agritourism region that has everything that anyone could really want to do here. Another of the Rogue Valley's standout attractions is in Ashland. That's where you can experience Irvine and Roberts Vineyards on the Bear Creek Wine Trail. Well, Irvine and Roberts Vineyards started in 2007. And after small success, we decided to expand the property and the vineyard. We're doing Chardonnay and Pinot Noir some sparkling wine, nice rosé, Pinot Meunier, a little Gamay. Learn by trial and error, and your site will absolutely tell you what works and what doesn't work, and what wants to grow here and what doesn't want to grow here. We are right at the convergence of two mountain ranges, the Siskiyous and the Cascades. We're just outside of Ashland, and with all the different varietals that can be grown and grown well in the Rogue Valley, we're just one of those. First thing everybody does is turn around and start taking photos of the vineyard and the mountains and the landscape and the views and they kind of stand out in the parking lot for a few minutes. And then once they get into the tasting room, you know, kind of a, a beautiful space with beautiful views and, and it's just pristine. The idea really was for the tasting room to be in harmony with its environment and really for the vineyard to be in the spotlight. One of our wine labels is called Convergence, and we make both a Pinot Noir and a Chardonnay. Convergence tells a lot about our story. We're between the two mountain ranges, the Siskiyous and the Cascades converging. It's two families coming together, the Irvines and the Roberts, and then we often find this place to be a place where people come together and converge. And so we just felt like it was a very fitting name for, for what we're doing here. I think the Rogue Valley, it just has so much to offer. We're in Ashland, we have the theater, we have great restaurants, we have Crater Lake, we have the Rogue River, hiking, biking, it's endless. And there's so many great wineries here making some fantastic wines and it's, it's really taken people by surprise. For more information about everything the Rogue Valley has to offer, visit travelmedford.org. Heading north now, just 20 miles outside of Eugene, is King Estate, a winery founded over 30 years ago with a deep commitment to sustainable farming and thoughtfully produced wine. At King Estate, we're a little unusual in that we're not just a vineyard. Out of 1,000 acres, we only have 470 that are under grapevine. What you have here is wetlands, old growth, and orchards, gardens, and so it's a diversified estate and it's integrated. We grow our own cover crop seed, and of course everything that's a byproduct of our winemaking goes into our compost. King Estate has the honor of being the largest certified biodynamic vineyard in North America. The emphasis there normally when you talk about making a biodynamic wine is minimize inputs as much as possible. You know, we're trying to be as hands-off as much as possible. 
And the hope is that you're gonna embrace the vintage. You're gonna embrace vintage variation, site variation, and every wine is gonna show not only the year in which it was uh, made and grown, but uh, also where it was grown. In 30 years, uh, the Oregon wine industry has changed tremendously. We've gone from kind of on the fringes to being uh, highly recognized uh, globally as a great wine growing region. I think we've been quite humbled and honored by some of the recent awards. Uh, top 100 wineries, wine and spirits for the 14th time, Northwest Winery of the Year. And I think what that says about King Estate is really we've just been a consistent and responsible producer year over year. Well, I think winning some of these awards is validation. It's validation for King Estate and what we've attempted to do. At the same time, you know, recognition of Oregon and Oregon's success is part of the story. Uh, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing with these awards if Oregon in general was not succeeding. If you've never tried a King Estate wine, I would probably say our Domaine Pinot Gris is a great wine to start with. The Domaine uh, Pinot Noir and the Domaine Pinot Gris, these are wines that are grown exclusively at King Estate. So these are wines that are grown under biodynamic conditions, not only grown that way, but produced that way. And they are of the highest quality, uh, the select of the select, and clearly a place to start. Well, Oregon in general is known for Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris. It's a very diverse, terroir-driven uh, uh, population of wines that people can try up and down the valley and up and down the state of Oregon. Well I think when you think of King Estate, Pinot Gris comes to mind first. I think that was probably the variety that put us on the map um, earliest, but we make a bunch of other really nice wines. You know, you can't uh, make wine in Oregon without making a great Pinot Noir. It's the flagship variety of the state. In addition to our own estate, we also work with probably 50 different growers up and down the state from Rogue Valley all the way to Columbia Valley. A lot of those are uh, 25, 30 year partnerships we've had with various growers and uh, it's a significant part of what we do. We're making, um, you know, Rhones from the Rogue Valley or Bordeaux from the Columbia Valley. We cover a lot of ground. A number of wines that we produce that are very limited production, we're talking 50 cases, 100 cases, a few hundred cases, made from special vineyards all over uh, Oregon and from here at the estate. And these wines are available only at the restaurant and tasting room, but also through our wine club, the Tower Club. Uh, it's a great way to join up and get these very exclusive wines. I think everyone's really excited for 2021. I mean, so far we've seen great quality across sites, across varieties. I think the whole state was really anxious and, and, and looking forward to a good harvest, and I think all signs point to that so far. Well, we're rural. We have a wonderful tasting room and restaurant right in the middle of uh, an estate property with tremendous views, a great uh, hospitality ethic, and it's a, a wonderful place to visit. The people that are here making it happen. The people that have built this, it's not one individual, two individuals, it's hundreds of individuals working year after year to get it right. Coming up, we're taking a look at some direct-to-consumer wineries making a name for themselves inside of Oregon's Mount Hood territory. Welcome back to Eye on Northwest Wines. I'm Natalie Marmion. No trip through Oregon's wineries would be complete without a trek through the Mount Hood territory where some of the most amazing wine in our state is made from wineries like Villa Catalana Cellars, nestled just south of Portland between Oregon City and Canby. The name of our winery is Villa Catalana Cellars. I started making wine on a whim in 2008 with a friend of mine. And uh, one uh, uh, carboy was uh, pretty drinkable, the other one was okay, and the other was terrible. The next year he didn't want to do it, and I found another vineyard and made wine from it. It was completely different. It was so good we drank it all before we got a bottle. And so I went, oh, the secret to good wine are good grapes which is, of course, something that everybody knows, but when you learn it firsthand, it's like, ooh. And so that was the beginning, and then um, 2012 was our first vintage, and we opened as a winery in 2014. I guess it started out really small. I really only wanted to do maybe three or four wines, and so that was a big transition, and then, um, and then it's gradually grown from there. Now we're doing eight or 10 different varietals. We start off with Pinot Gris, we have a Grenache Rosé, we have a Pinot Noir, and then a Merlot, a Tempranillo, a Syrah, and a Cabernet, and then the unique thing that we do is we do a fortified wine liqueur called Cascade Berry, and uh, that won a gold medal at the San Francisco Wine Competition back in 2015. Really, it started with realizing that I wanted to do something more than Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris. 
So it, it's been uh, an interesting process because when I find out that I can make uh, a wine from grapes that I'm not familiar with, it's exciting, especially if I've tasted those uh, wines and went, oh, that, I really like to do this. The latest one I've done is Tempranillo. And inter interestingly enough, the one that, um, that we're serving right now is 2017. I won a silver medal at the San Francisco uh, wine competition. And so it was my first Tempranillo and went, oh, well, I guess I may be onto something here. Uh, when we built this place, we designed this conservatory that where I'm speaking in right now, um, really just for our own enjoyment. But then when we decided that we would make the, the uh, jump to become a winery, it became the perfect place to have a tasting room. It's especially special in the wintertime when if it's really cold out, you come in, you see something in flower, kind of warms your heart and kind of takes away the blues of an Oregon winter. Less than five miles from Villa Catalana in Mount Hood Territory is Christopher Bridge Wines, whose owners take a rustic, hands-on approach to everything they do. About 69 years ago, my parents came here, settled down, fell in love with the place primarily because they had a beautiful view. We cleared land by hand, uh, just grew, to, grew into the place, so to speak, became our real home. We started growing grapes in 1998, and we started with about two acres, acre a piece of Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris, see how it would turn out. To the whites, we've added some interesting Austrian-German varietals. Uh, one is the Sigarebe, another one is Grüner Veltliner, and with the reds, we have a Blau Frankish and a Zweigelt. Other than those, we have Muscat, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Kerner, and Ehrenfelser, the latter two being also German wines. They're all growing here on the property. We actually um, began selling our wines in the Portland area in 2001 already, right after we started to uh, make our own first vintage. We just began with that, uh, didn't have a tasting room, but um, obviously we've evolved. So this building was formed from timbers in a form called timber frame. There are no nails or no screws in the structure itself, only for earthquake purposes. I just thought it was a wonderful way to build in our own philosophy again of doing things with our hands and with natural materials. Uh, Christopher Bridge is also on the Wine Trail Passport with Oregon's Mounted Territory. It's just a fabulous area. We think it's the best area in the state to explore and have now a good contingent of wineries that are all on that wine trail. I'd like to also say, when we make wine, when I make wine here at Christopher Bridge, in a way, the wine makes me. I've learned so much, so much about the process of growing things and making something out of it and then also so much from the people who have come here and experienced that wine with me. It's, it's been a wonderful experience, a collective experience. For more information about these wineries and others and so much more, visit mounthoodterritory.com. Now with so many options for wine in Oregon, you may not be sure which to serve this holiday. That's why our expert is here right now to help us all pick the perfect pairing. Hi, I'm Sarah Murdoch from the Oregon Wine Board. As far as wine pairings go, there are some wineries that are pretty close into Portland, starting with this one, Christopher Bridge. It's in Oregon City. This is a Gruner Veltliner. When we're talking about Gruner Veltliner, we're talking about a real spicy, peppery sort of wine, and it pairs really well with aspects of the meal, such as soft cheeses. If you want to start your holiday meal with a camembert, this is a wonderful accompaniment. Next, also very close to Portland, is Blakesley Vineyards. Their flagship wine is white Pinot Noir. This is a really versatile wine. This wine pairs really well with sweet potato casserole, green beans, or if you want to see what's going on at the kids' table, macaroni and cheese. Let's talk turkey. This is Duck Pond. This is a Pinot Gris. They also make a Pinot Noir under the label of Delaney Vineyard. As far as Pinot Noir, we also have a beautiful one from Irvine Roberts. This is from the Rogue Valley. King Estate Winery is just outside of Eugene in Lorraine. They make these wines biodynamically. This is a Pinot Gris. Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris pair really wonderfully with turkey. The thing that Pinot Gris does is it 
is kind of a palate cleanser when you're having turkey and it's a refreshing little change. With Pinot Noir, your turkey, it brings out the roasty flavor. So you can have a little fun with your Thanksgiving meal because Pinot Gris and Pinot Noir really make your turkey sing. Finally, dessert wine. This is from Villa Catalana. It's a Cascade Berry Fortified Wine. This wine, you could literally pour it over vanilla ice cream and stun your guests. Or you can pour it in a glass and enjoy it with your pumpkin pie. No matter what you're serving for your holiday meal, there's an Oregon wine just for you. I'm Sarah Murdoch with the Oregon Wine Board. Happy holidays. Coming up, we visit a winery that wasn't originally meant to be, and a group of Oregon winemakers dedicated to wine and the land itself. Welcome back to Eye on Northwest Wines. I'm Natalie Marmion. For our final two wineries, we head west, traveling down Highway 99, just past Sherwood. You will come across Blakeslee Vineyard Estate and its gorgeous tasting room, tucked right into the Shehala Mountains. In 2005, my husband called me and said, hey, there's a little vineyard for sale up on Chapman Road. You wanna go take a look at it? And the grapes were hanging and they were beautiful. This vineyard was beautiful. In December, we closed the deal and we had ourselves a little vineyard. We were gonna retire here and we were gonna sell all the fruit. We had no intentions of making wine. And so we sold all but two tons. And the two tons we saved for our little neighbor across the street the barking frog. He came to us and said, if you sell me a couple of tons of fruit, then I'll make you a little bit of wine for your retirement seller. But seven weeks before it was time to bottle, he called us and he said, I need a label. And we said, bring it across the street in Shiners. We're just gonna drink it and share it with our family and friends. And he wouldn't do it. He wanted to make certain that we got our own label. So we hired a graphic artist to develop the label that had to go to the Trade and Tobacco Bureau and back to the Oregon Liquor Control Commission. And the Oregon Liquor Control Commission asked that we apply for a winery license before they would allow us to print labels for 40 cases. So at that point in time, my husband and I said, I, I guess we're in business. We make, of course, Pinot Noir. We are in Oregon, beautiful Pinot Noir. And from that Pinot Noir, we make a rosé of Pinot Noir and a white Pinot Noir, which is one of our specialties here. We also do Chardonnay. They're all quite lovely. I happen to be a Chardonnay girl, so I love the Chardonnay. The white Pinot Noir is so outstanding, and during Thanksgiving and Christmas especially, simply because it's two different wines in one. If you can serve it chilled with seafood and lighter foods, and then for richer foods, you serve it at room temperature. The Pinot Noirs are stunning. We just won very big honors on our 2017 Estate Pinot Noir from the Oregon Wine Competition. We won a best of class, best of show on the 17th, and then and that was double gold medal, and we won a gold medal on our Estate Reserve. People really didn't want our brand in the beginning, and so we knew we needed to go direct to consumer. So we built this little property out so that it would be conducive to um, entertaining guests. And within that first year, we had 640 wine club members. So direct to consumer from day one, and we've never looked back. We sit on five acres, the tasting room, a lawn area with picnic tables that really house an overload of people as they come in the summer. This tasting room simply used to be a patio. And so during the winter time, we were pretty much shut down. And so we designed this beautiful piazza and it houses everyone in the summer, fall, or winter. I think Blakesley Vineyard Estate is a very special place. It is a beautiful venue overlooking the vineyard and Mount Hood, and Mount Hood shows his face so often, and it's just stunning. And the wines are beautiful, and it's just a great way to spend an afternoon. If you continue down 99 West in Dundee, you will soon come across the tasting room for the Great Oregon Wine Company and Distillery, where you can find wine, spirits, and a dedication to preserving the natural beauty of the region.
My name is Julia Cattrall. I'm the winemaker here at the Great Oregon Wine Company and Distillery. Great Oregon Wine Company is a place where a lot of really exciting brands are happening, including Duck Pond Wines, Ransom Wines, Great Oregon Wine Company Wines, and the Lifeline Wines. So we have a lot going on, and it's all under one roof right here in Dundee, Oregon. So the Great Oregon Wine Company is an amalgamation of brands, including the Stonewolf family and McMinnville and the Duck Pond family and the Ransom family. The Integrated Beverage Group has brought together a lot of brands that are all focused on sustainability and craft winemaking at a variety of scales. The Duck Pond Cellars facility has been here for a really long time, and we're excited to kind of draw together these four or five different expressions of the brands and be able to really focus on our core values of sustainability and value. I think one of the things that's really exciting about being at this place is that we, in addition to having a really broad and exciting portfolio of wines, are also making spirits um, from gin to brandy to whiskey and grappa, and also non-alcoholic spirits, which bring the same kind of commitment to quality and really kind of like depth of flavor without any of the alcohol. So if you come to our tasting room in Dundee, you can have a mocktail with no alcohol whatsoever, but just as much kind of concentration of flavor and depth. You can have a craft cocktail with some of our award-winning spirits, or you can have a, a flight of wines. I think one thing that's really neat about seeing people come in is that so often you have these diverse groups of folks and you know maybe you have a group of people who are primarily interested in wine and there's one person who is not as interested in wine, realizes that there's a whiskey flight and he's really excited. So I think the thing that's really great about connecting with folks here is that we really do have something for everyone. Our certified sommelier, Ray Salo, is an incredible uh, resource and he does private tastings on Saturdays for folks and they're incredibly serious deep dives into both what we have to offer here and how that is kind of contextualized within the Willamette Valley. Um, he does a great job and I would highly recommend it to anyone who is interested. This is our Ransom 2015 selection. We're really fortunate to have a really accessible space that's also really welcoming and gives us a lot of opportunity. We have this beautiful deck that is adjacent to the tasting room under a big old oak tree. We host concerts there. There'll be a concert series starting uh, probably in around May of 2022. I, I can't say exactly who we're thinking we're gonna kick it off with, but there are gonna be some big names. Uh, and we have a lot of repeat acts that people really love to come out and see. So definitely recommend that folks check out the concert series starting in May of 2022 and come out and uh, come out and see us. That's all for Eye on Northwest Wines. I hope this inspires you to get out and explore some of the world-class wineries we have right here in the Northwest. I'm Natalie Marmion, and until next time, cheers. <laughs>